Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to Road Nation's Roadless live stream. I am your host, Z Berg. This is my first morning show, and I'm so tired. <laughs> but none of that matters. I think I'm going to be really awake after our first performance. To start us off, Nathaniel Hoff and Jillian Spees are a husband and wife singer songwriter duo who together make up American indie folk rock band, The Bergamot. Take it away, boys. <laughs> What's up, Zaberg? This is this is a unique sitch because you're Z Zaberg, we're the Bergamot. Yeah, it's a big meeting in the minds right here. <laughs> meeting, <laughs> total meeting. <laughs> um, I love you guys. So you Thank met in high school. Yes. yes. When, yeah. did meeting? when did this happen? <laughs> I'm not gonna yeah. talk. About yeah. Well, I have to admit, I was lucky for music and songwriting because I don't think without music and songwriting, I don't know if we would be together. Um, but we met in high school and I was I was pretty excited about meeting Jillian. We were we were running in a lot of the same circles together. And um, but I don't know if she felt the exact same pull. He, well, he was so quiet that like I totally kind of missed him. I'm still kind of antisocial, but I've, <laughs> I've grown a lot over the years, you know. Actually, your best friend, I he was way more out in the front he was like everybody loved al and they loved you too but al was like way up in the front like was. median so i was more interested in his best friend at first and then we started talking i was like oh wait he ha he actually has a voice he he's very sweet and funny too so a song that we wrote <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the song that we wrote was uh, was our first song that we wrote together, and it was in a competition. And so what happened was this competition selected the song. We had to travel together down to Indianapolis from South Bend, Indiana. How old were we though? At that time, I was probably seventeen. She was probably 15. fifteen. And so that little bit of traveling that we did together, I think, was the beginnings of our relationship. And For ever sure. since then, you know, we've been uh, we've been like two kindred spirits. So I think that uh, that was that was the beginnings. It was all about the music, and the music brought us together and ultimately our love and then blossomed. we fell in love okay so how long did that take and how long how yeah. long have been together yeah i need i need okay a whole... i'll give you the details yeah. i'm big in the details so we have been together now for 17 years so if you do the math i'm 32 oh. um and you're like mm -hmm. what 34? 34 i always forget god i feel we still feel like we're like teenager so that's the weird thing but um we have been writing music together that whole time uh we've toured all 50 states we produced out a full-length documentary called state of the unity which drops in 2021 which we're so stoked we about. just submitted to sundance so fingers crossed but it's a long shot but hey you know what everything's know. a long shot these days right nothing makes any sense and nothing no. makes any sense anymore <laughs> so we're gonna ride that wave of of chaos we'll just hopefully ride it all the way to sundance yeah i feel like it's kind of comforting that all of the tenets of our formal for our former reality have just disappeared yeah yes. you know there's a freedom in that there's a freedom and as an artist and a creative there's ultimately liberty in that like you can just be who you want to be and if you haven't always been that then you can ex try and explore that space now and, and it's a great time of creativity i've been super inspired and i'm sure a lot of the other artists who are playing uh, uh the rest of the day will will tell stories of that inspiration as well <laughs> you you think they will you think everything is as positive Thanks. guys <laughs> i don't hey, know hey ah, that's how you have to hope, do it right <laughs> the beauty of life is you just got to share the world that you you know the world that, that we all kind of see we all work in this world together and it's that diversity of thought diversity of opinion that helps to bring us all together so i'm sure for every artist that's up in the realms of positivity there's going to be someone in the balance and that's how yeah. that's the beauty because some days you know you feel that 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 continuity happening it's a good time. I mean, it's a terrible time to play music, but it's an amazing time. It is. Because it makes you feel better. <laughs> yes. 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 It's very healing. Yeah, it's like, and for everyone right now, I mean, I'd like, I can't, can you imagine getting through this year and not being able to listen to music? Yeah, I, I just don't Forget even it. know. And, no. I, and I've taught, I've told Jillian a lot. It's like, I think that the big thing in quarantine for me is that if you don't love it and you're not doing it every day, it just, at the end of quarantine, it could be gone, you know? So if you're not, 
rehearsing or writing or doing the things that you love truly that you love i mean touring is a life and i love a lot of aspects of touring i don't love every aspect of touring Loading in all the gear i do night. love every aspect of songwriting so it's like you know you get to really embrace that and you get to you know explore and i think that you know during quarantine that uh you know rehearsing and being a part of that kind of mo daily mantra of doing what you love is you know going to make us all stronger in the end and hopefully better people our good friend said to us if you're not a 30 percent better person and at the end of quarantine, I'm not your friend anymore. So, <laughs> wow. so he's putting a ratio to it that we uh, that there's improvements that we have to take on during this time of great challenge. Positively threatening friends, you know. Yeah, very. <laughs> yeah, you know, you gotta have them. Yes. Holding us up to the bar, Seriously, the high no. bar of Seriously. improvement. Quarantine can make us better. Well, you guys are very lucky. You have the two of each other to do you know there's something very magical in the beginning of quarantine i was i didn't see anyone and playing music just alone in my room got a little bit depressing at a certain yes. i'm sure and then <laughs> yes a record with like one of my best friends and so i go to the mm -hmm. studio every day and we work together and you kind of remember i think some of the hardest moments i think for people in in this year has been like you guys have each other to sit in a room and play music with and you you mm -hmm. hear like your love and positivity in the way that you guys sing together and like it is like a magical thing that is very nice and i hope you're very very grateful for because some of every us day I'm alone being like can the dog sing harmony yeah. <laughs> and you know that's that's something interesting you bring up we are like deeply grateful like last night we want to walk together and it's just we we base our mornings and our evenings on what are we grateful for right now and i honestly think that's the key that holds happiness for us but also for other people if you can really wake up and say wow you know i'm healthy I, i'm in love i'm pursuing something that i love even though it's very challenging and, and it's been a financial nightmare this year um but but you know you stay positive you say well what are the things that i have what can i focus on because it's so easy to focus on what we don't have, what we can't do, and then get really depressed. So we've, we've based our mornings and our evenings on gratitude, and that's honestly got us through this. Afternoons, we're like, yeah, not so grateful. Forget it. You know, <laughs> we're just like, forget it, screw it. We're like pissed now. No, but, <laughs> you know, you just gotta put, you gotta put your energy and your emotion. Phoenix, yeah. Say again? Color in Phoenix. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. The sun is all the way high in the sky. It's like. yeah. And I mean, all these songs that we've been singing have been super inspired by, I mean, it was a crazy summer in Phoenix. If you look it up, it was a record setting heat wave in oh, Phoenix God. this year. So it's kind of a little scary. And I think it is time for us as a culture to start thinking about like what this climate means and the word and... climate change and how it's not a hoax, but it's actually this thing that's happening. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, you know, so, but an attitude of gratitude we've been trying to focus on, you know, we just focus, whatever we focus on in the, during this time is growing and we can see that. And so um, we try to be positive and, and just focus on songwriting and releasing as much music as we can. We just released a new song called Make It Last. I released my first debut single called Virtues. Um, yeah, and on so Election Day. On Election Day, because I think it was a referendum on virtues. And um, and I wrote a whole thing. There's a lot of it, uh, NathanielPaulHoff.com. You can check it out, a lot of stuff about virtues. But I just think that we're entering into a time where... We got to become conscious because the world is changing and whether or not we like it, we as a force, as a people have to decide what we're going to do. Well, the good news is it seems like we're starting to make some good decisions. We are starting. Yes, it all starts are. with a step in the right it direction. Does. It just starts with the, the power of one and then multiplying. Yes. Yeah, I think, you know, it, we might be we might be going some good places. I hope so. I, I hope too. so. Honestly. This weekend was, there was a, like, I mean, was it Saturday when we, like, found out the election? Yes. Yeah, 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 Saturday. In L.A., people were just honking their horns for 24 hours. It was, I was like, is, <laughs> is the world? <laughs> <laughs> is it literally traffic, like, forever? <laughs> no. Like, going out into the streets and there's, like, a sailor and a nurse kissing in the street. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. This <laughs> is good times. But it's weird. It's like I feel like we all have a little bit of PTSD so much where we're Oh like, my gosh. Is anything is good or is it like <laughs> No, I I agree with you 100%. I think that we uh gosh, I can't most of the time it's election day, right? But we had an election week. That was pretty taxing. I don't know how you felt, but we were pretty taxed. I haven't slept more than 2 hours a night for like this entire Ugh. just totally. Yes. It's brutal.
very excited for later today. It's finally cooled down in LA. I'm going to go on a run. Yes. Mm. Enjoy that. Start the <laughs> in a better place. <laughs> All right. No, because we've been chatting for a long time. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. But, Beautiful voices, wonderful songs, and, you know, make sure to check out both of their new releases. And thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Thank you. Shine on. Much love. Ever upwards. You too. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> oh. Hi, everybody. That was so lovely. I love them. They're so nice and cute. Um, next up, arriving in L.A. as a wee bonny lass. Chelsea Williams started writing songs and hip, hitting open mic nights at 12 and busking five hours a day, four days a week at the Santa Monica Promenade at 21 years old. I spent a lot of time at the Santa Monica Promenade when I was a kid, so I'm really looking forward to talking about this. Um, but yeah, up next, Chelsea Williams. Oh, you're not oh. this yet. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. That was very beautiful. Also, God, I... I love that song. <laughs> yes, it's been like, one of my favorites for a long time. <laughs> all time great. Um, okay, I have so many questions because I truly, I'm from LA and I grew up. I mean, 13 years old, it was like every Friday, me and my best friend, we would go to the promenade, we would put on like our slutty teenage outfits and just parade <laughs> around. <laughs> And I've actually always wondered how does how does any of the like busking situation work? You don't you have to have like a crazy permit for it? Isn't a whole thing? I have so many questions. You need to explain it to me. I don't know if this is interesting for our viewers, but I don't care. I'm in control. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. It's actually simpler than you would think. It's just yeah, you do have to have a permit, but you go to City Hall. It's like thirty seven bucks for a year, and then. They do give you this like novel of rules that you have to follow that I have to admit I never really read. <laughs> Damn it, I want to know the rules. <laughs> All kinds of weird arbitrary rules, like you're only allowed to display five CDs at a time. I've gotten a ticket for that before, actually. <laughs> and so what led you like to that in the first place? That's just such a trippy thing to end up doing. How did you end up there? I love yeah. it. I've been playing music for pretty much my whole life. I also grew up in Los Angeles, but kind of more the suburb area in, in the Valley. I'm a Valley girl. I'm from the 818. <laughs> valley. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. I'm down. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And I, I booked a gig that was like busking in Glendale. At the, do you know the Glendale marketplace in Glendale with the three frogs and there's a fountain? Yeah. So they, yeah. Now, so I'm very close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, so I booked a gig busking there where they actually paid me to just play on the street. Um, and then I, it kind of just spiraled from there. I found out people did that in Santa Monica and I, I did that whole thing, which was a little different. Like you have to, they don't have power sources. So you have to like, I got a car battery and like kind of rigged it to plug my PA into it. <laughs> it looks like a bomb. It's awful. <laughs> wow, that's a trip. Do you remember, how old are you? Sorry, is that a good question in an interview? <laughs> Are we the same age? Um, I when I was a kid, there were these two tap dancing twins who were there every single day. Were you there at the same time as them? Because they were amazing. And I... one one time, one of the twins gave me his number, and it was like a very big promenade moment for me. <laughs> I was like, this this young man is so famous in my mind. <laughs> Amazing. I don't know if I remember tap dancing twins. There was a guy that used to tap dance and play the trumpet named Chance. I remember him. He was awesome. He would like tap dance and then play the trumpet while tap dancing and accompany himself. It was pretty incredible. Did you like get to know everyone who were, cause there were people who were there every day, like not just you, right? Did you, was there like a community or were you kind of every man for himself? <laughs> A little bit of both, a little bit, you know, you made your friends out there, you had, you made your alliances. It was kind of like survivor, you know, like you had your friends, you had your enemies. <laughs> so yeah, I had a couple of friends that would like save spots for me and I would do the same for them. But then there were like the break dancers that would just show up with a boom box and set up 20 feet away from the folk singer playing Joni Mitchell, which was unfortunate. <laughs> to imagine the, the promenade drama. <laughs> <laughs> this is like porn for me. I'm really, I'm really loving this. <laughs> so 
how did you guys meet each other? How long has this been going on? Ooh, this has been going on for about five years, mm. right? Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just over five years. We met on a tour. We were playing with an outlaw country band, um, and they sh shoved about eight of us on a bus. And so I was on a bus with eight guys for a week or so. <laughs> and then Ross and I just met and continued talking ever since and started making music together. And it's it's been a fairy tale ever since. <laughs> It seems it seems like a pretty good vibe, you know. Babies, yeah. in, the <laughs> Babies in the corner with all the fun instruments. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. I don't have glasses on, so I can't really see what's yeah. happening. But... You could you could come up. You don't have to be anymore. <laughs> be a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, I know. I like that you've just been sitting in the back for the interview. <laughs> So that's how you do it in your family. <laughs> just, yeah, just like the singer-songwriter to, to like put herself in the front. <laughs> I mean, no, I say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so how's your year been, guys? <laughs> huh? I gotta say, I'm not. I'm not as positive as the Bergamots. I I respect their positivity, and they really like inspired me to be more positive. But honestly, this year's been rough. It's been really tough. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's it's been a time. But I'll uh -huh. tell you, you want to hear something that'll that'll make you feel better. You want to hear an amazing headline? Oh yeah. The headline goes like this. Trump is devouring fast food and aides are lighting scented candles to cover up the stench. <laughs> because <gasps> in an episode of Parks and Rec that will just never end and it's insane. <laughs> I, yeah, this is truly, I mean, the now that like, now that Biden is won and so there's like a levity to these news stories, it's just like, I feel like it's really spiraling into like a surrealism we've never quite experienced before. Like the Four Seasons landscaping <laughs> debacle. <laughs> It's just like nothing I've ever seen in real life. Like it's so, I feel like this is just, I mean, this whole year has felt a lot like a dream or a nightmare you can't wake up from, but now it's like, are we really dreaming? <laughs> it's pretty hard to tell. <laughs> it's gotten a lot more surreal. I thought it would get less surreal after the election, but it really hasn't, has it? <laughs> I know, well, that's the crazy thing too, is now what does a man like Trump as like you know as someone who's lost but still our president for the next couple months what it, what does he do <laughs> like yeah, what a lot of fast food i guess <laughs> golf maybe i don't yeah. know <laughs> so it's gonna be fun just it's like what if he was just like fuck it i'm just gonna empty out all of the maximum security prisons hunger games see what happens <laughs> Probably not legally possible, but but it seems like something that would happen in 2020. It would be par for the course, I mean. <laughs> All right, Adam, fine. I'll stop talking nonsense. Well, <laughs> That was such a wonderful performance, and yeah, I was very into all the sounds that were coming from the corner, so. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Great stuff happening. Bye, um, Guys, very nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Likewise. <laughs> the rest of your year, I think maybe it'll be a little better. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling good about it. <laughs> like that. That's what I like to hear. All right, well, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Oh. <laughs> Hi. It's me. I'm back. All right, so our next artist... I'm not even going to begin to summarize your bio because it's just so much. But Tara Naomi is a singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, composer, and sound meditation facilitator. I'm going to ask you a lot of questions about all of them. <laughs> For right now, here's Tara Naomi. <laughs> cool. You're not easy. <laughs> What'd you say? Um, do you live in LA? Is that what you said? I do, yeah. You look so familiar to me. I live in LA. <laughs> I wonder if we know each other. Or this is also a really terrible facet of my personality, which I constantly do this to strangers. 
but then it takes me like three years to remember someone I do actually know really well. <laughs> we, we, I don't know if we've met in person. We might have, though. It's quite possible because I do live in L.A., so. All right, so my most important question is, how do you keep those plants alive? I mean, look. <laughs> red. It's just incredible. <laughs> Thank you. Um, plants are sort of my obsession. And before I got my dog, Harvey, I was just dedicated to keeping the plants alive. But yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, honestly, I don't know. I think it's the California sunshine. People can just do it, and I'm not one of those people. I'm like, if I look at a plant, it will die. Like, if I look at it for long enough, it's just... <laughs> the main thing is 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 the water is like moderating the water, um, not overwatering or underwatering. That's what I found to be sort of like the key to, to the plants. But I don't know. I, it's weird. It was never a part of my life, and then suddenly it was. You're like a you're like a lovely person, even with all the darkness. You're like a nurturer. <laughs> I am. I'm a Cancer, Cancer rising, Leo Moon. Um, I'm a Cancer, yeah, but with an Aries Moon and a Leo rising, so. Oh, it's a lot. That's good though. That's like a good, that's a good combination because you've got the sort of like the sort of the cancer like nurturing mama energy of the zodiac, and then you've got the the Leo and the Aries, which like give you that ability to get out of the house, probably. <gasps> um, which this leads us very nicely into my next question, which what exactly is uh, being a sound meditation facilitator? <laughs> so sound meditation behind you is that what's happening yeah that's a gong and then there's like other other harmonic instruments and stuff and there's like some bowls over there and there's like a flute back there so sound meditation is using the harmonics and frequencies of sound to sort of quiet the brain and allow us to slip into a state of meditation a lot easier yeah. and faster it's pretty great i lead it online every thursday night um i love it it's one of my passions uh so Play one of those things for a second behind us. Do you really? Do you want to hear something? Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hear gong? Is that gong? Okay. All right. Hold on. Watch me fall asleep. <laughs> Should we go behind the gong? My favorite part about that is that it involves you hiding behind the gong. <laughs> I know, I'm peeking out because I'm trying to make sure I don't overload the mics because it's like a huge sound. Um, that is sick <laughs> and also so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I totally, I know, I was like, okay, they're gonna see my slippers as I walk across the floor and then I'm gonna be like peeking out. Yeah, because like I peek out, I, I'm just trying to like watch the monitor on my, on my, uh, on Logic to make sure it doesn't be like red you know yeah. it's quite beautiful I also do, were you around in LA when um, Steve Jones had a radio show on Indy 103 this brief short-lived amazing radio station is and, it like Jonesy's jukebox huh yeah and you would tone you tune into Jonesy's jukebox and it would just be like the radio and you would tune in it would just be silence and he would just be like <sighs> <laughs> I just like it was so chaotic and such nonsense and you just never knew it was going to happen it was amazing but yeah. i had a feeling of like if anyone's tuning in just right now there's a woman hiding behind a gong <laughs> and my face is like <laughs> also your little dog walked into the shot <laughs> oh he did oh hi harvey oh hi buddy Oh, yeah. that's good. He came out of his cage. I can't. I, I would love to show you Harvey. I would love to like, oh, do you want to come up, buddy? Okay, sit. No, this is the problem. He wants to interact, but he's afraid to be picked up. So it's like we have to go through this whole routine where I go and I sit on the edge of the couch and then like he jumps up 
And then I have to be like, okay, sit. And then on a good day, he doesn't like bolt. And I, I mean, he's really snuggly and once you can get him. Come here, buddy, I wanna pick you up. Come here. No, yeah, see, this is like my life. <laughs> the exact opposite problem right now, which is I'm, um, I'm house sitting or dog sitting these two like massive huskies. Oh my God. Will not let me be alone for more than two and a half seconds when I'm home. Wow. They're like, they won't. <laughs> Generally, like the my roommate who owns them is, you know, is there with them all the time, and so they're not constantly harassing me. But they're like, they will bang on my door all night until I let them in. Oh my god! <laughs> Host, like, who's an even bigger dog, got on the bed last night, jumped on top of me. Keep in, in mind, this dog is twice my size. Oh my and god! Moved me over, like physically moved me out of my spot and got in my spot and was like, what? <laughs> oh my god! So that was that was my night. I'm like, I guess I'm the dog now, and I sleep on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys have all the power here. <laughs> Our dog, we have to be like, it has to be freezing, and then he'll come. Like last night, he came into the bed. He only he only wants us when it's time for food or when he's cold, and then he comes in and he's super snuggly. And I'm like, oh crap, it must be freezing in there, or like, oh, it must be time. He he reminds us when it's time for dinner. Oh, I just said the word, Harvey. Oh my God. It's almost time for dinner. Do you want to sit? No, I'm like, I try to, I try to be like, I'd be like, treats, treats, and like try to get him to come to me. He's really great once you get him, but it's just, he's got some kind of fear of being picked up. So. You're describing so, any right now. <laughs> you're what, you're petting a husky right now? I said you could be describing any man right now. <laughs> oh, any man. I love how I changed that to like, you're petting a husky right now. No, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah it's just you know it's a really good year to have animals around you i've never i grew up with like no pets i've <sighs> never understood like what it's like to to hang out with animals now i'm like oh this is what it is oxytocin <laughs> exactly yeah it's pretty great and it's like a damn good thing they're cute too because sometimes they're such a pain in the ass like they want so much but then they give so much um so you i was trying to make sense of this exactly you're you've been translating you've been scoring you've been doing all <laughs> sorts of very interesting things would you like to tell us a little bit about that <laughs> yeah i um god i don't even know so i so i was translating i was uh i was um what's it called i'm like blanking on the word right now when you take a, a musical lyrics in one language um it's trans something and i'm like transcribing no i don't know it's, it's not transcribing it's adapting there it is yay i've been adapting uh, or i was adapting the spanish lyrics of a musical um into english for the english version of the musical but then i started writing my own musical and um and at some point i don't know in the last couple of years i just decided i would start studying composition because um i wanted to be able to produce my own stuff and i also wanted to score film and television so i just scored my first film um project last year and it was really it was really fun i did that with uh with a good friend of mine um a composer named andrew dost like? and how what's that you, what does that process look like it's like um, do you, do you, while you're scoring how does scoring work <laughs> so you how does scoring work i mean essentially like the very basic thing is you you have to find a way to support the picture the visual and the dialogue and not intrude but just kind of like lift it, like elevate it ele and, and play with the emotions. Because if you've ever watched um, a show or a movie without audio, without a score, it's just almost lifeless. And the music, because it's this two dimensional thing, right? And the music adds this other emotional element to it that makes it more three dimensional. And the music is really oftentimes what really gets me. Like when I start crying in the middle of a show or like a movie, which happens all the time, it's usually like a music cue that kind of gets me going. And so with composing, it's really interesting because you're you're totally not the focus. And when I first started, I'm like, uh, can you guys turn up the music a little bit? And they're just like, no, because you're not the main thing in this <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I feel like, but I can't hear that. I can't hear that horn thing that I did, you know? And they're just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The scoring because you don't, like when it's great, you're kind of not supposed to think about it. It's supposed to just work. It's like you only really are aware of scoring when it's fucking terrible, which is totally I experience that often. But I can try to remember what I was watching the other day. It's probably good. I don't remember. And I was just like, who the motherfucker? This is it was just like the most 
wildly inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The whole movie, I was just like, what is happening and who allowed this? <laughs> somebody knew somebody, probably. <laughs> That's usually when that happens. Because, <laughs> I like, yeah, I've heard that before when I've been, like, super distracted from the scene by some, like, really busy, like, violin thing. And I'm just like, stop it. Yeah. Don't. Just don't That's do that. Something that in its way is su sort of supposed to be invisible, you know, if you're a yes. singer where you're just like, oh, okay, this is, this is me hiding behind the gong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna live with that one down, I can tell. Um, my stream really loves it too, because I did that one time. I did that for them and they like screenshot it and then put it in my Discord and they're just like, it was like this picture of me like peering out and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not like sneak, I'm not creeping around. I'm like, I'm actually just making sure that I don't blow your eardrums. Oh yeah, there he is, there he is. He's under the gong. The elusive. Oh shoot, okay, we've just been told to shut up, to stop, ta to stop talking. Is throwing you under the bus. It's just, it's way. <laughs> it's the thing that brightens my day. <laughs> Everything about this was wonderful. There's just so much Thank going you. on here. <laughs> I, you hiding behind the gong was, it really just, it really did. It me. It's kind of the, it's kind of the Four Seasons total landscape. This interview. No. Like a total debacle, like a complete disaster. <laughs> that is the best thing that's happened this year, is what it is. <laughs> just my, oh, it's just so beautiful. All right, get out of here. We've taken up enough of you. All right, thank you so much for having me. And uh, oops, Harvey, chill. Week, so check her out on her own stream. And yeah, thanks for joining us today. And it was wonderful to meet you. You're wonderful to meet you too. Thanks for having me. And bye, elusive gong puppy. <laughs> Harvey, chill. Come on. <laughs> He's so out of control. Wherever I am, no matter what these days. <laughs> oh my God. But we're still on. Okay, there we go. You're good. You got to turn yourself off, babe. <laughs> All right, next up, um, Vanessa Silverman is a singer, guitarist, songwriter, and record producer from Brooklyn, New York via LA. All through 2020, she's been releasing a new single each month, and her newest single is called Something to Believe in. Yeah, I think you're gonna just Why, hello. Hey, what's up? Oh, you know, just <laughs> trying to live. <laughs> right? Um, how crazy is it for you as a person who's played, what is it, 800 shows over the last five years? <laughs> I honestly, I don't know, like part of me, like I'm also a producer and engineer and, and do other music business stuff. So part of me had adapted to working remotely, like before this happened, I would do it from the road and stuff like that. But um, um, at times I feel like I'm like, I don't know if it's sunken in because travel was such a huge part of my life. But before this happened, a little bit over a year ago, I moved to New York to kind of relocate and like just tour from here but do less touring and um you know i kind of had set my mind on on working on my production uh and the music more and kind of applying what i did with touring to um the music to grow my songwriting and stuff like that i think though you know i had like so many things affected just like so many other people you know sessions canceled tours canceled um but I feel like there there was a card that I like read before all of this happened and it said bloom where you're planted and I was like cool I'm just gonna apply that to this and this is what's happening right now and and we have to recreate things and um, and adapt because we're creating a new future and we can't stop and we can't wait for things to go back to the way they were and yeah, I mean, I, I feel like we, we got to keep things moving and keep putting out, you know, good energy and artists need to keep creating. And yeah, I guess that's my take on it. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, I guess like a lifetime of touring does teach you to just roll with the punches. <laughs> like My gosh, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, learning how to adapt to different environments and just, you know, just going with the flow and stuff you know um it's 
funny you you were talking about Indy 103 earlier and like I mean I'm from you know I lived in LA for 18 years and I remember when your band first came out <laughs> yeah which I loved by the way oh, thank you that's so nice <laughs> yeah um yeah if you guys want to hear a great um re recording check out the like um yeah it's like you know you as an artist you I mean you know how it's it is it's like as an artist and as human beings you know I think we're all thrown in this and learning how to just try and be more sensitive more adaptive more um I think this is also you know I think brought people together or to rethink things and and I see positives in that for sure you know yeah, and I feel like that's kind of the only, I mean, if nothing else, like 2020 has just felt like a year of the reckoning, because it's <laughs> like, the thing is I find it's in both people's personal lives and like the entire world. Yeah, definitely. It's like, what next? It's just like, it is the world saying like, you guys broke it. <laughs> now go to your rooms, you have to deal with it. And it's, you know, like I had like a horrible traumatic breakup at the very beginning of the year that like set things off. And I really remember being just like, God, I can, this is just the worst year of my life. I can't believe it in January. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you know what was to come? I was like, hold my beer. But it was kind of this magical thing of it. Once all of these sort of things got set in motion and I got it. It feels like 400 years ago. If remember the beginning of lockdown where all oh my of Venice Canal and shit <laughs> and it was like oh wow the earth really is healing <laughs> Dude, like to totally like in the clearest skies I remember reading that in LA had the clearest skies ever reported like India so awesome here <laughs> I mean to me I'm like oh man that's like wow like there was like so many interesting signs and like I feel like so many changes in terms of how people are feeling built up over the years you know and now people are seeing like okay it's it's not up to one person or leaders it's us all together if we want any kind of changes we have to implement them as a group as a as a country as friends as a world and like really you know we, we got to take charge and and create the world we want and it's, you know, I mean, I must say it's weird because I, as I said before, it's like, it doesn't feel like it's not canon. Like, I cannot believe that Trump is like, <laughs> is going to leave. <laughs> I, I know. I, honestly, it's the what a whirlwind, you know, of anxiety for everyone. Just, it's but just been. Feel like, think, if this were not the ending of this year, I don't, honestly, I like don't know how I would go on because it does actually feel for a moment like, okay, we actually kind of did put our money where our mouths are and like, <laughs> out there and voted and people like do want to see this world change and we're all you know I feel like at least this is a step in the right direction totally totally ah. yeah <laughs> yeah no, definitely but yeah but it's it's interesting it's all very interesting I mean it's yeah and it's you know I mean it's funny thinking about how you right before this were like okay I'm gonna go I'm gonna spend some more time at home I'm gonna relocate and and the world it, it was weird and my drummer and I started working remotely like months before and I had already made this plan in like November and December to release singles and it was like kind of a yeah it was like weird it was like I kind of almost in some ways had set myself up and it was just like you know almost like pre-prepared or something um you know in some ways I have to say like okay that's fine it was weird actually before I was supposed to have two tours in um in the spring and like for some weird reason I remember feeling like oh my god that doesn't feel like I'm doing that you know, I couldn't even internally visualize. I've had this thing, you know, for any kind of people who are spiritual in some ways, like I've always had visions of stuff um, kind of ahead or like what I want to do, you know, and artists are visually, I mean, every kind of artist beyond musicians, but, you know, I, I haven't had, I've had a harder time seeing that stuff now. Um, well, it's because we've entered into a convulging multiverse situation <laughs> that's my that's my theory about it where it's like we're no longer just in one universe it's <laughs> yeah, absolutely it's 
cringe at the beginning of this pandemic. So. Oh my god. <laughs> I tried to stop myself from watching The Walking Dead, I must admit. I was like, okay, Vanessa, stop it. Yeah, dude, honestly, it's, it's been an interesting thing seeing like what is comforting to us during this time and like what people watch and what people are reading and like it was so fascinating to me in the beginning of this when everyone was like yeah let's watch a bunch of things about pandemics and i was like oh no <laughs> i shall not be doing it. totally I... <laughs> yeah tips on me meditation all the way <laughs> yeah i found myself just rewatching gray's anatomy over and over again which i don't even it's like so off brand for me and i don't know why it's comforting but I think because everyone dies and then you can go back to the beginning and they're all back to life that I think I have some control over my life. <laughs> to totally. I, I feel like during this time I was like, all right, what can I fill my head with like funny things, positive things, animal documentaries, like nature documentaries. <laughs> You're from memes, if nothing else. You know? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Totally. I love that you have been putting out a song every month. That's a nice. That's just a <laughs> for everybody um thank you i i um this this past month i was originally going to put out a record in december and then with the climate change of everything i you know i decided to kind of change my plans and then moving next year i'll put out a single like every other month maybe a couple extra here and there but uh, i just decided that you know with the climate and just I think the music industry, you know, to try to think differently. Um, I, I feel like in some ways we're in, we're in like some kind of a singles world or, you know, very short attention span just at the moment, or that's how I'm, I guess, creating and seeing things. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to keep content and, you know, building and, you know, share that with people and, you know, your fan like it's nice to have something to look forward to in this world right now you know <laughs> like thinking about the people who are waiting for your singles to come out and that's like a thing keeping people going is a nice, nice way to say goodbye, you know? yeah i mean I, i've also you know i've turned to doing like live streams weekly to you know i really felt like especially during the heat of this when it was really bad in new york like i wanted you know um to give people like who had like regular jobs, who, ha who who all of a sudden had that regularity and then didn't like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do something regular. I'm, I'm gonna like talk about useful things that people can apply to being artists or like positive things or, you know, just play music for people and, and connect that way. And just, you know, this is, this is our world. We're adapting to, um, you know, if you weren't into the virtual world, you are now, cause this is where we're at, no escaping. <laughs> Yeah. yeah well listen i mean it's you're doing a great job <laughs> thank so, you i know i've realized i have not like played live music in i, I was like streaming before but now i've been making a record so, oh that's awesome which has been nice but i realized i'm like what do i know how to play live music <laughs> do i still do this everything with being an artist is like if you it's the same with like touring or being home like when you're home you can't really remember tour and when you're on tour you can't remember home like it's such an odd kind of yeah it's it's so it's so weird i mean i know too, it's like i i didn't have a home and i had just the storage unit um and it's i mean life is so different on the road and and if you're an artist and then all of a sudden you know like so many you know yourself and so many other artists out there um you know that that world has gone away and and that that was such a huge part of so many people's lives you know and, and for supporters too so we just yeah i mean well, it, whether, one day i will again be drunk in a small town with some strangers after <laughs> <a> show <laughs> totally totally or it'll just be you know different the next time you know or you'll read <laughs> well I Thank you so much. That was a wonderful performance, and it's very nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. You guys, thank you again. Thanks to everyone who tuned in uh, and commented. And, uh, yeah, thank you so much again to Road Nation and Adam. And you guys have a beautiful day. Make sure to watch her. Are they weekly live streams? Or I'll, I'm going to say they're weekly. <laughs> okay, up next. And you're going to have to tell me if I'm pronouncing this wrong, but 
Brittany Fonts <laughs> is a Nashville-based alternative artist whose powerhouse voice is the reason why she's compared to Amy Winehouse, Adele, and Janis Joplin. Show us what you got, babe. Hi. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Can I see those stickers closer up, please? <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Can you see? Can you see? Wow, those it are says, oh, you, oh, you fancy, because my last name is Fonts. So, so I was right. Yeah. I didn't fuck it up. <laughs> it is fonts. Yeah, it's fonts, but everybody says fans, but. <laughs> <gasps> Those are nice stickers. I forget about stickers, you know? Yeah. I mean, I have so many of them. I've been just sticking them on my own things, like computer, guitar case, wall, bathroom stall. <gasps> Do you have bathroom stalls in your house? <laughs> I have a bathroom. It's actually right there. <laughs> I'd like to imagine you have like a public bathroom stall situation in your own home. <laughs> please, please come use the restroom in my house. <laughs> I will serenade you. So you're in you're in Nashville? I'm in Nashville, yeah. What's the vibe in Nashville? Um, good. I mean, you know. <laughs> it's uh it's 2020 but no i mean i've kind of continued to live somewhat normal ish because i work in a restaurant so i kind of like have to you know how and have you been working like pretty much this whole time yeah i've been working the whole time pretty i mean obviously we shut down for like a few months there i went home back to louisiana wrote a lot of songs then came back um but we've been you know taking all the precautions and whatnot but i've been fine so How's, have people been nice? How's people's general, like... Yeah. <laughs> Nashville, please visit. Like, everybody is so kind here. I love Nashville. Everybody's so kind. I mean, that's one of the reasons I moved, because people were, like, overly kind, and it felt real, and I was like, whoa. Yeah, it's like, imagine kindness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goes a long way. I have two of my best friends live in Nashville, and um, one of them just sends me pictures of like the changing leaves pretty much every day at this time of oh, year. they're just, so pretty it, they're so pretty and i'm just like why do i live in la <laughs> i know i i lived in la for a year and i don't think i could do it again i'll come visit but nashville's where it's at i sit on my roof outside and watch the orange trees and it's beautiful yeah changing leaves really just really do it for it me. does it it does it <laughs> Yeah, finally like yesterday was literally the day that because la just has two seasons it's like it is summer and it is la winter which is like 60 degrees <laughs> finally shifted and it was like i woke up in the middle of the night last night freezing which is like, oh, <laughs> I, I need it to be cold y'all yes. <laughs> so long <laughs> feel that feel that oh man so what's your have you are you putting out music anytime soon did you just put out music What's i just happen? i just put out a song it's called fine by me the music video is going to come out in a couple days and i went up to new york for the first time i drove through like i i drove from nashville to new york it was my first time being there and it was really not smart of me because i drove and i was like getting there what like 17 hours later through 70 lanes of traffic and i was like i don't know what i'm doing anyway saying all to say went through a lot to get this video so please go watch it <laughs> um excellent well i look forward to checking that out yeah I think we can just see on your social media website any way to yeah out. instagram is probably the best way to that's where i post the most so at britney fonts pfa and tz and that's damn straight well i'm yeah. very to hear what that sounds like and wonderful such a wonderful voice thank you so much for joining thank us thank you thank you bye it's been a nice show <laughs> <laughs> so much <laughs> up next high school jacob is an alternative pop artist based out of los angeles the project was started by former wesleyan music student jacob masters back in 2017 with the intention to combine elements from modern pop and r b with his upcoming single release jacob will be unveiling eighth hsj 2020 a collection of music and corresponding video games and he knows my little brother so <laughs> what's up high school jacob let's do it
Yes. Um. <laughs> Hello? Uh, we're really, we're vibing out. <laughs> Hi, thanks for showing me your bed. Hi. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Sorry. I've got gardeners. Great, sorry about that. Dog is freaking out, so I feel you. It's just a, <laughs> it's just that time of day, I guess. <laughs> all right, we'll keep it short. It's okay. First of all, you do yeah. you my brother Thomas Berg. Of course. He said to say hi. <laughs> oh my God! Hi, Thomas. Thomas is the best. Thomas. I wish is... Thomas was here right now. I wish Thomas could have was... played bass. He's, yeah, Thomas is the nicest of all the Bergs, by far. <laughs> okay, oh. so you made a video game to go along with your record? Is that a thing? Is that a real thing? Yeah, I made four singles and then four video games for each single. Do you... <laughs> Which is cool, yeah. I'm happy somebody likes it. Um, That's really exciting. What? Oh, my God. You need to chill out, Paparino. It's absolute chaos here. <laughs> Um, awesome. you, like kind of dog. video games yourself do you know how to do that uh i know like i don't know how to code or anything like that but what happened was my friends at the rattle la put me in contact with a game design put me show me a website and then i got in contact with a game designer in portugal oddly enough and he sort of designed the games based on the artwork that my friend jack herzog and i developed for the for the songs that's so fun so yeah. that was Ever. Yeah, it's cool. And so two are out right now. And it was just a cool way to just be more creative with the songs as well. Just like get more out of it. I mean, I feel like that's where we're all heading is just make me a video game and <laughs> put me in a pod. Especially in quarantine, when people were hitting me up, like when I was sending them demos, they were like, thank God I have something to do. Thank you. And I was like, why don't we just do this? Why not? Yeah, I love that. I think that's a wonderful idea. And also just, I mean, having just listened to your music, which is wonderful. I am excited to see what the video game version of this looks like. <laughs> and also there are video game versions of the music in the songs that I that I developed, like with like bleep bloopy sounds, like Mario sounds and stuff. So you can hear alternate versions. There's the alt cuts. Oh, that is very, very fun. Wow, I love it. I'm super down. I'm so tired, I have like no questions for you. <laughs> it's okay. Um, well, thanks so much for having me, everybody. So when does the next and, video and video game come out? What's the uh, the schedule like for all of this? Well, the song that I did called Not Worth Dying For is coming out on Thursday, November 19th on all streaming platforms. And then the game will go live with that. And it's only available on like computers. It's not, we couldn't develop it for mobile because that was like a whole other can of worms. But if you go to highschooljacob.com and then go to the arcade, you can play it there. Do you and do obviously a listen video game streaming event for when this stuff comes out um i was i was reaching out i've been reaching out to twitch streamers to see if i can get people that play sort of flash games to get in on it and i definitely will be playing them and i always have a contest for merch and stuff like that whoever like makes the best video makes the best artwork or gets a high score and all that so i'm um, it's been pretty fun i'm excited to keep doing it I love it. I mean, it's what a creative way to like experience your music. And I mean, there's never been a, a better time for video games. <laughs> Definitely not. That was the that was the thing. And also, um, yeah, just like something fun and like the games are good. They're definitely not like, you know, this this isn't a gimmick. They're pretty good. And some of them are pretty hard, honestly. So. Love it. What do you like better, the, the music or the video games? <laughs> um, it's, it honestly depends what kind of day. If I'm at, if I'm like not feeling myself at all, I'll, I'll like the games. I always like the games. Sometimes I hate the music, but the games are always fun. So that's, I guess that's, that's, that's good to have a couple options for you know when you. Yeah, exactly. It's like I'm not feeling this guy at all, but the game is fun. <laughs> that's good. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. That was a wonderful performance, and I'm very excited to experience the rest of your your little world that you've created. Well, which is not that little. Yeah, I. I admit, Tell, tell my manager that. No, I'm just kidding. But um, the uh, but yeah, thanks so much for having me again. This is so much fun. And hi to Thomas, obviously. Most importantly, we love Thomas. Yeah, that's the most important thing. And uh, yeah, just thanks so much to everybody who's tuned in. And thank you so much. I love, I love performing. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. Awesome. Well, this was amazing. It was wonderful to meet you. And so good, to meet you. good luck with the next release. It's very exciting stuff. Thank you very much. And yeah, please check it out while you can. Thank you.
All right. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Bye. <sighs> oh, it's been a hell of a morning. Um, I would like to thank the Bergamot, Chelsea Williams, Tara Naomi, Vanessa Silverman, Brittany Fonts, and High School Jacob for joining us today on Road Nation's Roadless live stream. <sighs> I'm going to take a nap. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and remember to follow us on Twitch. We're here twice a week and it's always a wild ride. I'm your host, C. Berg, and thanks so much for joining us. And good night.